So for the for today, we will just discuss the difference between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes while in the cell types and tissues, next week na natin siya i-discuss. Okay? So, ito yung mga main objectives natin for this lesson. First is you must be able to distinguish prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells according to their distinguishing features. And next is to identify the cell type and tissues. So, generally, we have common misconceptions and mistakes about our understanding sa eukaryotes and prokaryotes na kailangan makorekt. So, first, This is a fact or isang katotohanan to na eukaryotes can be unicellular because many people think that eukaryotes are all multicellular. Akala ng tao, pag eukaryotes, automatic multicellular. Pag prokaryotes, automatic unicellular. Remember, ano ulit pinagkaiba ng dalawa? Si unicellular, it is a single-celled organism. Multicellular, it is as or an organism made up multiple cells. ba? Diba? Ngayon, si eukaryotes can either be uni or multi. Pero si prokaryotes, automatic, single-celled or unicellular. Malino po ba? Okay. Now, even though prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, They do contain genetic information. Walang nucleus sa si prokaryotes. Remember, sa prokaryotes is primitive. Sinauna. Makaluma. Hindi pa ganun ka-advance ang mga organelles nito sa loob. So, they generally have a circular, single circular chromosomes where they store their genetic information. Yun lang ang meron sila. In the form of a nucleoid. Samantalang sa proker sa eukaryotes meron na silang well developed nucleus kasi 'di ba sa nucleus meron ng um, nuclear membrane na magpo-protect sa nucleus at may iba parts sa nucleus sa loob. Okay? And last, it may sound negative but bacteria being some bacteria being prokaryotes are very important because even though they cause diseases They also play significant roles which are beneficial for mankind. Some of the roles are decomposers. What are decomposers? Basically, decomposers are the organisms that break down remains or the dead organisms. Sila yung responsible para bulokin at i-decompose yung namatay ng organism. Mapadahon yan, halaman, tao, hayop, etc. Okay? Then, bacteria are also ancient producers of oxygen. Ito yung paulit-ulit kong minimension sa inyo na cyanobacteria. Okay? Si cyanobacteria kasi Una-una sa lahat, they, will, they were the ones who first used photosynthesis. E ano bang ulit ang product ng photosynthesis? May nakakaalala pa ba? Anong nagagawa ng photosynthesis? Ako po. Photosynthesis. May nakakaalala pa po ba anong products ng photosynthesis? Oxygen. Okay. Kasi di ba plants intake sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and then turn it into energy plus oxygen. Okay? So, yan bacteria were one of the first organisms to use photosynthesis on Earth, which makes the Earth oxygenated. Nung naging oxygenated ng Earth, eventually life flourished and life thrived. Okay? Then, 
bacteria also aid in digestion. Eh, mga iniinom nyo, um, yakult, Dutch mill, delight yung mga yon. they have cultured bacteria inside those drinks. Sir, baka naman magkasakit ako dun. Hindi po. Because, kaya nga may good bacteria na tinatawag. They help in digestion. Bukod sa enzymes and acids sa stomach natin, this bacteria will also help you digest food. Lalo na sa mga hindi matunawan. Another thing, it helps in the nitrogen cycle. What is the nitrogen cycle? For instance, um, an organism died, dinidecompose na siya. So the tendency is, while it is being decomposed, nitrogen will be released by the organism as well as carbon. Ngayon, ay ang mga nirelease niya will be returned to the environment and be used as energy by the environment. Okay, that's the nitrogen cycle. Also, it is a vector for genetic engineering purposes. What do you mean by this? Bacteria are single-celled organisms and they can contain genetic material. So, in research, pwede siyang injectionan ng or lagyan ng iba't ibang genetic material or genes and then study how it replicates together with the genetic material na, in, na nilagay sa kanya. Or pwede siya i-introduce yung genetic material na yon na nasa bacteria i-introduce sa ibang cells in order for them to see kung would this cell engulf the bacteria and be influenced by the genetic material that was inputted? Okay? Do you have any questions so far? Okay. Next. Let's go to... Characteristics ng prokaryotic cells. Pro means old and karyon means nucleus. So basically, it means old nucleus. Prokaryotes are basically 3.5 billion years old. Medyo matanda na sila, but they are still important to us in many aspects, such as fermentation, industries for fermentations, like this bacteria, lactobacillus, streptococcus, pneumococcus, etc. Okay? They are also used for research work. Now, in comparison to eukaryotic cells, they do not have well-developed organelles. And di pa ganun ka-advanced compared sa eukaryotes. Okay, ang prokaryotes medyo primitive pa. Sinauna, luma, uh, underdeveloped pa yung mga ibang organelles nila. So, ito yung mga parts nila. First, you have your glycocalyx. The glycocalyx is the dark red surface here. Wait lang. I'll change the color of my cursor. This is this one is the glycocalyx. This is part of a protective layer of the prokaryotic cell. It also functions as a receptor. Receptor, it receives signals, it receives messages, etc. It is also an adhesive. Bakit kailangan ng adhesive? Kasi dumidikit siya sa ibang cell for it to be, for it to reproduce or to transfer genetic material. Then, you have your nucleoid. Ito yun, yung nucleoid. Wait lang. This one. Tingin, it's, it's just called the chromosomes which contain the genetic material, unlike sa eukaryotes, well-developed ang nucleus. Then, you have your pelus. Itong color blue yon yung pelus. Ayan. Dito. Basically, this is a hair-like hollow, hollow attachment present on the surface of bacteria and is used to transfer DNA to other cells during cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. Okay? Yan yung color blue na line sa gilid. Mesosomes, it is the extension of the cell membrane. This is the, the mesosomes, ito yung this one. 
compart na to. That's your message so. It unfolds into the cytoplasm during cellular respiration. Okay? Cellular respiration is during when cells intake oxygen. Okay? Then, flagellum. This is the tail. Para saan yan? For movement. Ito. Ito yung flagellum. For movement ng cell. Then, the cell wall. Aware naman na tayo sa structure ng cell wall. Okay? The fimbrae. Fimbrae are also hair-like structures which attach to other bacteria during mating. Inclusion or granules. It helps in the storage of carbohydrates, glycogen, phosphate, fats, etc. in the form of particles which, is, which can be used when needed. These are your granules. Ngayon, this sounds familiar. What counterpart is this sa eukaryotes? Ano yung counterparts ng inclusion or granules sa eukaryotes? You just had your quiz yesterday. I'm hoping familiar pa siya yung mga nareview nyo. Anong part ng cell yun? They store the acts as storage. Correct, Aaron. Vacuoles. Okay? Dito, wala pa silang vacuoles. They have inclusion or granules. Kasi, remember, they are still primitive at sinauna. Onti lang yung parts nila. Ribosomes, we all know what ribosomes are. Protein synthesis na yan. Cell membrane, we are all familiar with this. I don't need, I don't need to go through with this pa. Basta cell membrane, semi-permeable, layer of fat and protein na allow the entry and exit point of materials in and outside the cell. Then there's the endospore. The endospore helps the cell survive during harsh conditions. Sobrang lamig or sobrang init na panahon, sobrang moist or sobrang dry na panahon. Depende sa condition na nagdadaan ng cell. If it is not well for a cell to undergo these conditions, merong endospore na mag, magpo-protect sa kanya, tutulong sa kanya to survive. Ngayon, what does the, the, the endospore contain? It contains peptidoglycan. This is a chemical present in the cell wall that helps the cell survive in the harsh condition. Ngayon, the, the cell can either be gram-positive or gram-negative. Kasi sa pag-gram-positive, there is a large amount of peptidoglycan. And gram-negative, thin layer lang ng peptidoglycan ang meron. This is dependent on the condition. Whether kailangan ba maging gram-positive or gram-negative ang bacteria. Is that clear? Okay. Now, that's it for the eukaryotic cells. Let's go sa prokaryotic cells. So, you meaning new and karyon again, nucleus. New, nucleus. So, there are advanced types of cells found in plants, animals, and fungi. Eukaryotic cells have a well-defined nucleus and different organelles who perform different functions within the cell. Though working is complex to understand. This kind of cells are found in algae, fungi, protozoa, plants, and animals can be single-celled, colonial, multicellular, and among them are fungi, protist, which are the major kingdoms. Bakit major kingdoms? Because fungi and protists are mo the most abundant kingdom compared to animals, monerans, and plants. Okay? So, in simpler terms, mas advanced na po ang eukaryotes o prokaryotes. So, we can safely conclude somehow that prokaryotes, some of the prokaryotes, have evolved into eukaryotes. Okay? Ngayon, ito yung mga general structures na meron sa eukaryotes. The nucleus, I don't need to further discuss this. Basta it's the central processing unit of the cell. It contains the genetic material at meron siyang nuclear membrane. Di ba? Cytoplasm, Jelly-like substance na kung saan lumulutang yung mga organelles sa loob. At doon nangyayari ang mga iba't ibang metabolic processes such as the enzyme substrate complex, 
formation. Then, you have your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, site of production for ATP. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are only found in plants, plankton, and algae. Chloroplasts are necessary for converting sunlight into chemical energy, which is the for which is the act of photosynthesis. Ngayon, chloroplasts contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is an enzyme found in plants that basically is responsible for making plants color green. Okay? Then you have your Golgi body. The Golgi body eh, or is also known as the Golgi apparatus or Golgi complex. It is a stack made it is a stack flattened disc shaped sacs known as cisterna. Remember si cisterna is acts as storage and protection for the materials before it is being secreted or transferred sa mga nakangailangan nitong materials. Then you have your lysosomes and vacuoles. which function for waste disposal and storage. Si lysosomes, disposal, it's also known as the suicide bag of the cell. Also, intracellular digestion sa bahala dyan. For example, a cell is dying, i-engulf na lang siya ni lysosomes, etc. Vacuoles, storage, At the same time, for growth, waste disposal as well. Endoplasmic reticulum, may dalawang klase. Ano ulit ang dalawang klase na endoplasmic reticulum? Soft, smooth, not soft. Smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay? Basically, these two differ sa kanilang texture. One is tabular, the other one is granular. Sino doon ang tabular? Smooth, correct. Ang granular si rough. Now, pansin nyo. Di ba na-mention ko sa inyo noon na ang endoplasmic reticulum ay natatagpuan malapit sa nucleus. Pansin nyo, saan siya nakapuesto? Ito. ba diba? Malapit siya sa nucleus. And, ano ang products na pinoproduce ng rough endoplasmic reticulum? ba diba? Proteins. Ngayon, this, these are your ribosomes, yung maliliit na bilog. Pansin nyo, it is lined up with ribosomes. That's your endoplasmic, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Kasi di ba si rough endoplasmic reticulum, nag, nanggagaling siya sa nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. Samantalang si smooth endoplasmic reticulum, nanggagaling siya kay rough. Okay? Eventually, this will become a rough endoplasmic, a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? Then appendages. Appendages are are necessary for the movement of the cell, such as cilia and flagella. Okay? Ang flagella, yung buntot. Ang cilia, ganito yan. Imagine, this is your cell, tapos may mga gantong parang buhok na nakapaligid sa buong cell. Wait lang. Palitan natin color para nakikita nyo. Yung mga nakapaligid dyan sa buong katawan ng cell. Okay? Na siya ang magiging responsable sa movement. Mukha lang siyang buhok pero mga para maliliit na paayan na tumutulong sa cell gumalaw. Okay? Those are the types of appendages that somehow eukaryotes have. Like for instance, sperm cell has a flagella. ba? Diba? Then your cell wall. The cell wall, will already know its function. Also, the cytoplasmic membrane o yung tinatawag na cell membrane or plasma membrane. Do I need to elaborate on these two? I'll take your silence as no. Hindi na kailangan. Na-discuss naman natin siya before. Ribosomes. 
Again, ribosomes are for protein synthesis. Okay? And eukaryotes have usually 80 set vergs of ribosomes. Set vergs is what you use to measure the amount of ribosomes. Set verg, 80 set vergs, which later on are divided into subunits such as 40 set vergs or 60 set vergs. Okay? Pero generally, almost all eukaryotes have 80 set vergs. Now, cytoskeleton. Um, na mention natin to noon, pero hindi fully. Now, the cytoskeleton is divided into the microfilaments and the microtubules. Basically, both of them function for the supporting of the framework of cells. Pero, ano pinakaiba na lang dalawa? Microtubules have 24 nanometer, a diameter of 24 nanometers. Uh, the microfilaments have a diameter of 6 nanometers. So, sino mas malaki? So, microtubules or microfilaments? Correct. Microtubules. Now, ano pa pinakaiba nila bukod sa size at sa spelling? Okay. First one contains tubulin. The other one contains actin. Okay? Actin ang meron kay microfilaments. Para saan po yan, sir? Si actin are enzymes or proteins that help during muscle contraction. Remember, cells make up tissues, tissues make up, or make up organs. Your organs, specifically the muscular system, is made up of muscle tissues. Muscular tissues. Ngayon, saan ba gawa ang tissues sa cell? So, when the muscles contract or relax, actin is generally the one responsible for helping the cell keep its structure while the muscle contracts. Malinaw po ba? Okay, thanks Marvel for answering. Then, tubulin is for generally locomotion. And what do I talk? What do I mean when I talk about locomotion? Sa locomotion, when cells move, when cells undergo cell division, such as mitosis, meiosis. Sure, na sa stretch yung cell, it helps the cell keep in shape. It helps the cell re return to its original shape and make sure all the organism or all the organelles are in proper place. Ayan ang function ni microtubules specifically. Kaya siya may protein na tubulin. Malino po. Ngayon, patapos sa marina naman tayo. Don't worry. Um, I have listed general um differences between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. First, prokaryote. Prokaryotic cells are 0.5 to 3 na micrometers. Ang basa dito ang micrometers. And si eukaryotes, 2 to 100 ma micrometers. Okay? So, sino mas malaki? Prokaryotes, eukaryotes. Eukaryotes. Also, their bigger size can explain the need for many other organelles. Kasi di ba pansin nyo, mas marami organelles sa eukaryotes compared kay prokaryotes. Okay? Next, all other organelles such as or the mitochondria, ribosomes, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum, cell wall, etc. are absent in prokaryotic cells. Remember, primitive pa kasi sila. Okay? Then, another thing is there is no well-defined nucleus sa eukaryotes. Ay, sa prokaryotes, sorry. Pero sa eukaryotes, well-defined na nucleus kung saan kitang-kita ang storage ng nucleus. Okay? May cell membrane, uh, may, may nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope, may fluids pa sa loob, and then the nucleus itself containing the genetic information. Which, okay, yun ang ano ni eukaryotes. Then, cell organelles are present in membrane bound, are, and are membrane bound. Meaning, pansin nyo, Yung mga organelles ng eukaryotes, meron silang cell specific pang membrane. Bukod sa cell membrane ng cell, meron pa siyang specific na mga basic na 
protection sa mga cells na ito. For instance, sa Golgi body, diba, it is also membrane-bound. Nucleus is also membrane-bound. May protect, at additional protective layer siya, diba? Okay. Then, in prokaryote, cell division takes place through conjugation, transformation, and transduction. How, what are the difference between these three? Conjugation, for instance. This is conjugation. Dalawang cell, dalawang prokaryotes, nagdikit through the fimbri. Kaya di ba may function siya for addition? They transfer genetic material. That's the cell division here. Through conjugation. Transformation, how is transformation occurring? May ligaw na genetic material outside the cell na encounter ni ni prokaryotes kukuhain niya yan. That's transformation. And lastly, transduction. For instance, this bacteria encounters a virus. Virus is not living but it can still be engulfed by the cell and which eventually affect the cell's DNA kasi sometimes bacteria can contain genetic material that affects the whole structure of the cell. So kapag na-engulf nga yan, that's called transduction. At syempre, pag nag-replicate itong cell na to, nag nag-transduction na naman siya, edi syempre, matatransfer niya yung virus sa ibang cell. Malino po yung difference ng tatlo? May katanong na? Then, the process of transcription and translation occurs together. There is a single origin of replication in the prokaryotic cell. On the other hand, there are multiple or origins of replication and transcription. In simpler terms, sa isang origin lang nanggagaling ang replication and transcription, translation and transcription ng genetic material sa prokaryotes. Pag sa eukaryotes, maraming sites Maraming lugar or origins na nangyayari ang replication and transcription. Okay? For instance, sa nucleus nangyayari ang transcription and replication, ang translation sa cytosol. Okay? Ang cytosol, ano ulit to? It is the fluids contained in the cytoplasm. Okay? And lastly, genetic material in the DNA is circular and double-stranded in prokaryotes. Kaya nga, pansin nyo sa prokaryotes, kanina coiled, parang coiled siya pa ganun-ganun lang, paulit-ulit na pataas sa, sa eukaryotes, ay sa prokaryotes. Sa eukaryotes naman, linear and double-stranded ang DNA niya. Okay? Prokaryotes reproduce asexually. Sorry, this should be eukaryotes. Hindi ko napalitan sa PowerPoint. And eukaryotes have a sexual mode of reproduction. Okay. Also, prokaryotes are the simplest, smallest, and most abundantly found cells on Earth, and eukaryotes are larger and complex cells. Do you have any questions or clarifications regarding the topic? May katanungan po ba? May katanungan po ba? Ha? Ano yan? Wala. Okay, so kung wala na, um, by the way, this lecture is recorded. Um, I-upload ko na lang yung edited the recorded version na to. Mag-noise cancellation pa kasi kanina pa natakol yung aso dito sa amin. Anyway, i-upload ko tong lecture na to, tapos i-send ko sa inyo. Then, by next week, at yung magiging topic natin. Cell types, epithelial tissues, yan collagens, connective tissues, ayan, muscular, nervous, neurons, mga mga yan, and meron pa tayo sa plants, which is medyo marami-rami talaga. Okay? So, if you don't have any more questions or clarifications, we can already end this Google Meet. Have a nice day, everyone. Please stay safe, and I hope to you to be more active sa mga susunod nating discussion. Okay? Stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.